Yeah, you know, thank you. I can't believe it because I've been on this small, two hot, salty rocks in the middle of nowhere for two years. And I think this has kind of taken me by surprise. Suddenly everybody knows about us. When I first started this journey, uh, educating everybody about crypto two years ago, most people didn't know about it. And now suddenly it's become the big thing. And that's what this, I mean, it's amazing. Here we are in, in Vegas and it's the start of a lot of the crypto stuff. Yeah, can you believe this? Real Vision takes over Vegas, who'd have thought that? We started in a small office of three people in Grand Cayman and now we're here. But this whole thing is, is that journey. What's amazing, what this is gonna be about these next couple of days is about, you know, we kind of all know that financial system that we all live in was broken and it was depressing and it's still depressing now. It's all about inflation and how the Fed have screwed up and all of this and suddenly exploded out of the last two years was this new world. This new world that started for many people in the journey of Bitcoin, and suddenly it's become a journey of, oh my God, all of money, all of value is about to be digitized and tokenized, and everything is changing. And this is the biggest opportunity any of us have ever seen. And it's not gonna be a smooth path. Whatever we think it is, it's not gonna be that. But all I do know is over time, it's going from here to somewhere exponentially over there. And that's an incredible thing. It just feels like for once we're in control of this and we don't know, how, as I said, we don't know how it's gonna get there, but we know for all of us, there's some optimism and it's nice to be in a world with optimism. It's not been a very optimistic world, but this is an optimistic world. And you know, that's why I'm really looking forward to speaking to my first guest, which is Bill Tai, because Bill shares that sense of optimism with me. He also, yeah, I just, been backstage with him now. He's got a big grin on his face like I have because we know magic is happening. So let's welcome Bill. So this is weird because we always do this over Zoom. Yeah. Obviously he gloats because he was an investor in Zoom and it really annoys me because he's really good at spotting trends earlier than anybody else. So I kind of think I'm good at that trade, but he's much better than I am. So, so what's funny is when Bill and I started talking, he talked about his journey into NFTs at first, because you saw this really early. So for people who don't know, explain a little bit about NFTs, because you were there with CryptoKitties in the beginning and you saw the potential before and everyone who's laughing at you, they're like, Bill, what are you talking about? Yeah, so I, you know, I, I, I give you a little bit more of my background. I, I'm originally a, uh, I'm originally a chip designer. So I, I learned design computer chips and came out to Silicon Valley in 83, 84, joined the CEO of Fairchild Semiconductor. And if you don't know that uh, company, uh, that was kind of the mothership that had spin outs like Intel and AMD and National. And one of the later CEOs started a company called LSI Logic and I joined him. So I did a lot of hardware, like, you know, real men stuff, you know, like chips and routers and switches and hubs. And I started an ISP. <laughs> there are a few people here that, that live that era. Yeah. And so, uh, so when I started Inventure, which was uh, 1991, so 30 years ago, I mean, wow. that's the kind of stuff I was funding. And we went through that internet ramp and decline. I started doing a bunch of mobile apps. And then, the, you know, the crypto thing started to happen. I, and I had been a student of decentralized computing and peer-to-peer -peer networks, so I got involved in that early. But uh, most of the stuff I did was like hardcore technology stuff. And along comes CryptoKitties. <laughs> and so uh, the founder of CryptoKitties, uh, the, uh, there's a parent company called Dapper Labs. And he's a guy that would come to some of my kite surf trips, which is a whole other story. But uh, <laughs> they started this thing... <laughs> If you guys kite, somebody out there kite boards. <laughs> yeah, there's fanatics. Like you talk about a fanatic community. That's one of them. Uh, we need to tokenize it. Yeah, th th <laughs> there's a way to do that. But uh, anyway, so, so this company had started at a, uh, the CryptoKitties product line was a, an experiment at a hackathon because they had an enterprise tool that was sort of like a dashboard to measure traffic. And this thing just took off. And I had already been working in the Bitcoin blockchain kind of stuff. So, so I saw it. And uh, um, actually, I'll, I'll disclose one other thing, which is that uh, I met Vitalik in 2013 wow. at a Stanford Bitcoin meetup group. He asked for funding and I passed. 
Good. I'm sure you should have got them all. So I don't get them all. Yeah. So anyway, but I had already been involved in Bitcoin and it was working. So I was like, well, I don't, you know, this Ethereum thing. Well, I'm not sure, you know, but it was clear that he had captured the attention of all the younger people that, you know, the kind of knew how to do iPhone apps and weren't really looking at the heavy infrastructure stuff. So I started to look for applications, funded something that the very first uh, ICO out of Australia called Power Ledger. I was one of the main people behind that. And then uh, if you guys remember the first peer-to-peer -peer decks called AirSwap that came from a company called Fluidity that uh, Joe Lubin and Mike Novogratz and I funded. And the third big Ethereum thing was CryptoKitties. And so this was, I think, around 2017, I ran into them. And a lot of people kind of made fun of me because they're like, come on, Bill, digital cats. And like, what do you do? You breed the cats and you sell the babies? I and mean, what, what is that? Like, how big can that be, Bill? You know? <laughs> and um, anyway, but I, I, I could just see it. And I, 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 could, I had already, by that time, uh, in working with the air swap fluidity people, had kind of come to the conclusion that, that uh, you know, my world originally was routing electrons, you know, more efficiently you know, instead of light. Like if you've ever seen vacuum tubes, some people in this audience are probably old enough to remember, <laughs> you know, like fixing TVs by taking old tubes out. Okay, so all that stuff got basically flattened out and pressed into molten sand. So now it's all like computer chips. And that just brought a level of efficiency where you could kind of route the electrons, make stuff be you know, more dense, faster, better, cheaper. That was kind of phase one. Phase two was, was the building of the networks that moved it from moving electrons to moving bits. And where we are today, obviously, with blockchain, it's the encapsulation of, of assets. So whether they're physical molecules or digital value, it's everything. So I think, you know, this, this little video is so, so spot on. It's, it's literally the routing of everything, everything on this planet. Yeah, everything's becoming digitized. But why, why did CryptoKitty stand out to you and to most other people that didn't get it? What did you see when you saw it? What, what went through your head? That, because what you're doing immediately is you're, you're having to think four stages ahead. What you think now is not what it's gonna be. What did you see? Marketplaces. So, so as I started to see what you could do with blockchains and in the building of the, the decks that AirSwap had, I started to look at some of the things that were naturally occurring in the world of venture that were very, very high volume ramps, but not necessarily economically efficient. And I used to tell people, hey, you know, it's, it's a little bit early, but, um, you know, if you were to start Uber all over again, you would make it a blockchain app, mm. right? So, and, and basically you'd have a car represented on a chain and you would assign ownership of that car for five minutes and you wouldn't have to build it. So, so to me, Uber looked a little bit like, again, you know, for people that are older generation, you know, if you remember before the internet hit, you had private communications networks like AOL, Prodigy, and CompuServe. And then once those became kind of standardized, you had a more homogenous, low cost network and even in like a network world, you had competing standards like, you know, Unix, Novell Networks, Novell uh, Network, TCP, IP, et cetera. And then once it got to a common platform, you could have economies of scale uh, in cost and reach. And so I think, you know, I saw Uber and all these other, like the, everything in that category of marketplaces can be made a lot more efficiently in the next generation with blockchains. And so CryptoKitties was the first to me, breakthrough consumer one. Because, you know, the trading exchanges for the cryptocurrencies, they had already taken off, but there wasn't anything that had broken through to everybody. Yeah. And I was like, this is, the, this is it. And I said, I, no matter what happens, they are going to be in, when I fund these early stage companies, one and of this the was things, Dapper Labs you funded, right? Dapper Labs, yeah. Yeah, so when I fund these, when I fund very early companies, they, they never have products. <laughs> They're building towards something. And I just push the teams to get into something I call the vortex of information. You know, because until you're out there touching customers and in this swirl where you can learn, your, your applications of resources until that point are very inefficient because you're kind of like splatting things on the wall. Once you have customers telling you what they want, you just have a whiteboard and you list them. You know, and then the requests come up a lot. 
that's what you do, you know? So, so I was like, this one, it's, it's in the vortex and there are gonna be a hundred things that come out of this. I don't know what they are, but it's gonna work. The cryptoverse is an incredibly exciting place and it's gonna be absolutely massive. This has been just a small taste of my own personal journey into crypto. Join me for free over on realvision.com forward slash crypto as we discover just what this new world will look like and much more.